Hello everyone, welcome back to Dizzy Treasures. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Melissa. I have a pretty cool jewelry haul here for you guys. This is from a couple weekends ago. I went to a yard sale near me, a big, it wasn't really a community sale, but more of like a, almost set up like a flea market style. It was a lot of fun. W went with my mom, we had a blast. And I got quite a bit of jewelry from this sale. Uh, most of this is from one woman where I paid, I think about 20 bucks for pretty much most of this. And then I bought a few pieces for a couple dollars here and there from other vendors as well. But we're just gonna dive right in. I kind of mixed it all up. Overall, I would say maybe $30 was paid for all this jewelry. So I feel like I got a really good deal. Let's dive in and see what we have. A lot of this stuff is in baggies. This one vendor, she had a ton of jewelry and it was, she had it marked as, I think it was three pieces for $5 or $2 each. And once I brought my little box up of everything I wanted, she just looked at it and said, eh, 20 bucks, which I know was way less than what it would have come to had she added it up the way she had it priced. So that was pretty cool. Gotta love people who are just looking to get rid of their amazing jewelry. <laughs> All right, so first we have this little pair. This is so pretty. These are actually perfect for this time of the year with these beautiful amber green and kind of red colored rhinestones. These to me, I was gonna say almost scream Juliana because Juliana used a lot of these Nevette stones, but these are actually marked Austria on the back right there. And these are absolutely beautiful. I really love Austrian rhinestone uh, pins, earrings, necklaces. They're all really beautiful. So those are really very nice. Good start to the box here. Next we have this guy. I grabbed this one quickly. Whenever I grab necklaces like this, I always have a hope they're amber. This one does not appear to be. As soon as I take it out of the bag there, I can kind of tell it just looks like a Probably a polystyrene or some type of plastic, but still very pretty. These will still sell despite them being faux amber. I've sold many of these, so that's still very nice. Good condition, nice and long. A lot of this stuff I haven't even really thoroughly looked through since picking it up a couple of weeks ago, so some of this is going to kind of be a surprise to me as well, which is always fun. All right, next we have this little ladybug pin. I remember grabbing this one. This is so cute. Let's get this off its little cardboard and see if it has any markings. I saw this. I always, I'm always drawn to animal pins and animal and bug jewelry. I always think is very cool. And so when I saw this, I, I had to pick it up. It's so cute with the little flowers. And it looks like it is marked. So this is an Arthur Pepper piece marked Art which is amazing. I absolutely love his jewelry and it sells well. So that's very cool. And it's in really great shape. I'm not really seeing any enamel loss on the flowers or anything like that. So that's a really cool piece. I really love that one. Next, I picked up this very cute little Disney ring. This is Tinkerbell and she's sitting on a little black enamel flower. I think this one was a dollar or two and I couldn't leave that behind. It was just so cute and being new on card, I thought that was a great little pickup. Then we have this chunky one here. It's a very pretty gold tone and this one is Anne Klein. You can see the little lion mark right there on the clasp. Sometimes they'll have that lion mark as well as either an AK or an Anne Klein marking. I do not see any other markings on it, but this definitely confirms for me that this is an Anne Klein piece. And this is probably an older 80s piece, I would say, 80s, 90s. These are highly sought after, so that's really nice. Not too much gold tone wear. That was a really cool find. Next, we have these little earrings here. Let's take a look at them. These are very pretty. These are, these are interesting. I almost wanted to say they were wedding cake or Millefiori, but I'm not really sure that they're either of those. It's, 
I do believe they're glass. I guess you would consider these a Millefiori design, kind of almost confetti-like. These are really very pretty, though, with the green crystals and the faux pearls. I can see why I grabbed these. They are very pretty. I don't think they have any markings. Nope, they do not. But very nice. Absolutely beautiful. Then up oh, there are a few more of these rings. I'll wait till I get the rest. I believe they're a set, so we'll hold off on that one for a moment. Get rid of this little empty box here. Next, we have this pretty necklace here. Let's see if I can untangle this. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this may have been a Betsy Johnson. Let's see if I can get it untangled. It's one of those ones with the kind of fine wire sort of chain, multi-strand. These just love to tangle. <laughs> All right, well, this is the best I can do without going too crazy on camera here. But this is a Betsy Johnson. You can see the tag right there, the BJ on one side and the Betsy Johnson on the other. And this is a cool one with all of these kind of different little charms and rhinestones. It is complete, it looks like, and in one piece I just have to do a little bit more untangling but you can kind of get the idea of what it looks like here. And the pendant here is absolutely beautiful with all these different size and shaped crystals. So I always pick up Betsy Johnson. It usually sells pretty well, and that's a really pretty one. And next we have this guy. Oh, goodness. I remember picking this up. He is a mammoth of a rhinestone mouse. I thought this was so cool when I pulled this off the table. He is heavy. I honestly can't even imagine wearing this. It's so heavy, I feel like you would have to be wearing a heavy winter coat to even hold this up. If you were just wearing a shirt, it would pull your shirt down. That's how heavy he is. But he is super cool. I don't believe he is marked. He is not marked, but he is just amazing with all of these pave rhinestones. He does not appear to be missing any stones, and he is just so cute. I mean, this guy is big. Let me grab my measuring tape, and we'll see if we can get a size on this guy. He is big, about two and a half inches by two and, I would say two and a quarter inch, 2.25 inches, but wow. And the weight on him, my goodness, super cool. Okay, next we have, I think we have two of these too. These are just some, some bangle bracelets, some baited, braided bangle bracelets. It's hard to say. These are marked Taxco Mexico, and these are marked 925. However, I don't believe they actually are, because if you look at this one particularly, I do feel like it looks like a silver tone where the silver plating is wearing off. I'll test them just to be sure, but I have a feeling these might not truly be sterling. So we'll have to look into those. But sometimes in the heat of the moment when you're grabbing for cheap priced jewelry, you just kind of grab and as I've said in past videos, you figure it out later. <laughs> then we have this little set here. See this, I don't even remember picking up this set. That's, that's how quickly I'm grabbing for things sometimes with jewelry. <laughs> This is very cool. Let's see if I see any markings on here. This almost looks like they might be copper or copper toned metal, if nothing else. Very pretty little set though with the faux pearls and that coppery color. So that's very nice. Then I picked up this rosary. I don't always pick up rosaries, which I'm sure some of you would tell me I'm crazy because I know there can be good value, but this particular one really caught my eye. This one was from a different yard sale that same day, and I paid $2 for this one. The reason I picked this one up is because the cross or the crucifix is sterling silver. I saw that it was marked. It is marked Roma, which I imagine would be Roma, Italy. 
and it is also marked Italy Sterling on the back here. The Roma is kind of etched up here, and then it says Italy Sterling down here. And then aside from the Sterling pieces, these beads are absolutely beautiful. They are a blue kind of opalescent glass bead, and I thought that that was just so, so pretty. So I absolutely had to pick this up. And I, I really should be looking closer at rosaries in the future as well, to be honest. But this one really caught my eye. So very pretty. Then I picked up this guy here. I have had this brooch probably five or six times. It is a Coro. It is. There are a lot of these out there. They're not worth a ton, but I, I always pick them up anyway because they're just so cool with that kind of 3D effect but ha had to pick it up it's hard to leave signed pieces behind then i picked up this little necklace here this is a very pretty rose quartz beaded necklace with i believe some amethyst i would say on these cylinder beads and these purple beads here another thing here that doesn't go for a ton of money but they're just so pretty i'm always drawn to these beautiful natural stones and if things are cheap enough I am perfectly happy making you know sales for things that are ten dollars or even less on eBay or wherever if I'm getting the item for the right price so certain things I just I have to pick up <laughs> then I got this very pretty ring here I do believe this one was sterling silver if I'm not mistaken let me take a peek Yep, this one is marked 925 with the Ross Simons little R mark in there. It's a little hard to see, but that was very pretty. Couldn't leave that one behind. Then I got these little earrings here. These are also very cool. These are unmarked, but they appear to be sterling silver to me. I will certainly test them. And then they have these beautiful art glass beads with little kind of sterling, little pointy beads at the bottom there. I thought these were really pretty. Again, with this amazing kind of autumn colors, perfect for this time of the year. Then we have these little rhinestone silver tone and blue earrings very pretty i think that these are unmarked as well oh hang on do i see a mark nope there's just a, it's a little pattern on the ear part there <laughs> no mark though still very pretty a little bit of wear it looks like on this one i'll have to see if i can clean this up it's got some kind of i don't I'm not sure that it's verdigris, but it just has a little bit of dirty stuff on the bottom there. I'll have to see if I can get that off. Then I picked up this very cool cross pendant necklace. This has that foiled glass dragon's breath kind of cabochon. Very pretty. The chain on this one is pretty worn out. There's a lot of silver showing through where it should have been gold toned, so I will put this on a new chain. This piece appears to me like it would be a Sarah Coventry piece. I don't see a mark, though. Um, I'll still look it up and just make sure that it's not, but very pretty nonetheless. Then I got some cloisonne bracelets. I actually... I got these three, and then I got another three that matched these exactly, which I kept because I have a cloisonne bangle collection. But um, these are the three that were duplicates. So I, I try I try not to have too many duplicates because how many of the exact same bracelet do you need? So <laughs> I try to make sure I check because I do come across a lot of cloisonne bangles. But these were pretty. I usually sell these in little groups or lots. Next, we have this little baggie here. Let's see what this is. We've got this pair of earrings. Very pretty gold tone with faux pearl. Let's check and see if these are marked. These are not marked. These give me 
Alfred Philippe Trafari vibes, but because they're unmarked, I absolutely will not say that that's what they are. But they just have that kind of look to them. Very, very pretty in good shape as well. And then in that same bag were these very cool little earrings. These painted, I believe they're painted little portrait kind of cameo style earrings. They do appear to be painted. And they are unmarked. But very cool, very different. Next, we have this chunky pair of thermoset earrings. I always pick up thermoset jewelry, especially when it's in good condition. You find it a lot and it's not in good shape. So this, this is pretty good. I will, like I said, always pick these up. They're very pretty and I love this blue color. Ah, uh, yes, this was a great find too. So this piece actually I paid up a little more for. This one I paid $15 for. This is a beautiful bohemian garnet star pin. It's in really good shape. All of its garnets are intact with no chips or cracks. And I absolutely had to have it. Everything at this vendor was... 50% uh, off. So she charged me only $15 for this, which I was happy to pay. Absolutely stunning. I've been finding a lot of Bohemian garnets lately, guys. It's I don't know what's going on because I normally never find them. So it's been it's been fun to find these pieces lately. Next, we have these little gold tone feather style earrings. These are very pretty. Let's see if these are marked Oh, these are marked. I actually did not think that they would be, but these are Giovanni. And these are very cool with this little feather design. Really good condition. Very little wear. And next we have this little ring. This is actually new with tags. And this is Lauren. Oh, I forget. I forget the, the brand now. Let's see if LGA, I believe it's Lauren G. Adams. And this is a sterling silver Lauren G. Adams ring. And this is really cool. It has this little heart dangle and it can kind of flip flop either direction and you can wear it with either heart showing. And that's sterling and new with tag, which is really cool. You don't often find jewelry new with tags. So, and from the same person, I also got this little ring here. This is another one that was sterling silver, I believe. Yep, this is also a Lauren G. Adams ring. Also sterling. Very pretty. Pave CZs in there. Then I picked up this bracelet. This one is marked, but I have no idea what it says, which is always a conundrum. <laughs> So right here, this is definitely marked and it might say Mod Blood or Mon Blue. I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. If anyone knows what this mark is, please be sure to leave a comment because it's a, it's a, it's a little hard to read. And then on this side, there's a little like person walking. So yeah, if anyone knows that brand, please let me know. I thought it was super cool either way. It has a very chunky kind of brutalist, modernist style to it. So I'll have to look into it more. Hopefully I can figure out that brand. This is a heavy piece as well. Then I picked up this very nice little art glass beaded necklace. Very pretty, blue and green. I've sold these before. I see them all the time in different colors. I, I usually pick them up. They're very pretty. Then we've got some more rings here. Let's see, I picked up this one. This ring is very pretty as well. I love, it looks like a cushion. It looks like a little seat cushion and just how the stones are on the top and then kind of match and go around the sides. This one, I believe, was also sterling. Yep, this is another Ross Simons sterling ring with gold vermeil. Very pretty. 
This one is my size and I like it quite a bit. <laughs> it's always the conundrum when selling jewelry, when it fits and you love it. <laughs> but very pretty. Then I got these little rings here. These all kind of came together. I don't know if they're actually meant to go together or not. None of them are marked that I am aware of. Oh, actually, this one is marked. This one here, the larger one, the wider one, is marked India 925. You can make that out in there. With an A and a square. And the other three are not marked. Now, I don't really know that they all go together. They might not. They look nice together, but these three look like they're a slightly different color, so they might not go together. But these other three also almost look like they would be sterling in gold vermeil, so I'll have to test them, but... All right, next we have this little pin here. This one looked like an oldie, maybe gold filled. I thought this was cool. Very neat little 3D design. I do not see any markings and it does look like it had a clasp replaced because this is brass and then this silver tone pin just really isn't very befitting of this piece so and it, I can see some solder so I think it was repaired at one time but still very neat and with some of these older pieces you kind of expect them to have some wear and little damage sometimes something was fixed it's just part of their age oh uh, yes and then I picked this one up this is this is very cool it is unfortunately broken which I did know when I grabbed it it's a a cobra with a stone and it is unfortunately missing its pin. Now, this is something that could potentially be fixed. I would have to see if I could get the old broken pin piece out of here, open it up and, and put in a new pin. I'll look into it and see if I feel it's worth fixing. This piece is marked. It's marked Germany. But I thought that was just really cool, even broken. Sometimes I'll list things that way and just let the new owner fix it. They can get it for a better deal and fix it up themselves. But I thought that was pretty cool. Then I picked up this necklace. This is a big, chunky, acrylic kind of faux crystal pendant necklace. This is a newer piece for sure. And I'm not sure what this brand is. I've seen this before. And I'm not sure if it's one of the many unknown makers. There are quite a few jewelry tags out there where all of us jewelry lovers, no one really knows who to attribute the tag to. This might be one of those. But I just thought it was really cool with the gunmetal and this big chunky acrylic crystal. So... If I can't figure it out, I'll list it anyway. Just do my best. Then I picked up this super cool pin. This is a big old enamel sunflower pin. And it is in beautiful condition. There is, I want to say, almost no enamel loss. I mean, I see a little tiny bit on like the edges of some of these flowers. But this is in fantastic shape. I love the center. This is just too cool. I could not pass up on this one in the beautiful orange and yellows. Evidently, these autumn colors, they're they are drawing me in this time of the year. <laughs> but this is, I mean, to find these in this amazing condition, it doesn't happen too, too often. So that was a no-brainer pickup. Then we've got another little set of thermoset earrings here. These almost look like little pink jelly beans. Very cute. And these are in really good condition as well. These are another pair in really great shape. No markings. Sometimes you'll find thermoset and it'll be Coro or Lisner or something like that, but no markings on these, but that's okay. They're beautiful and in wonderful condition. Then I picked up these little cameo earrings. These are unmarked. They're gold tone, but they are real shell. 
I don't know if you can kind of real real shell jewelry kind of lets the light shine through I'm not sure that you can really see that on the video but these are real carved shell so absolutely absolutely beautiful it's so funny to me when you have a set of earrings like this and one will be carved so different from the other this one she's wearing I believe like a little earring there and this one doesn't even have an ear it looks like and they're just they're so different even though they are a pair so that's always cool they're all hand carved so not everyone can be exactly alike then I picked up these little lily pad I guess you would say lily pad or maybe ginkgo leaf with faux pearls and these are marked coro on the back these do have some gold tone wear, but they're pretty cool. I think they could sell anyway. Then I picked up this little bracelet here. This is a Liz Palacios. I actually just recently had found a pair of earrings in one of my hauls and listed those recently, but this is pretty. She makes very beautiful, dainty rhinestone pieces, so that should be a good one. Next, we have this brass and check glass multi-strand necklace. It's a little twisted up there, but nice long one. This one does not have a clasp, but it's got this really cool kind of filigree brass work in the check glass. That was very pretty. Then I picked up these little clip-ons, some faux Baroque pearls and crystals and glass stones. These have a very unique setting. It's kind of like a cupcake setting. And these are unmarked as well, I believe. They have a little bit of wear to the gold tone, but very pretty. Then we have these little gold tone earrings here. These are very cool. These have a mesh kind of circle piece with Greek key design around the sides. I don't believe these were marked. They are not, but they are very cool. They're very different. Next, we have these earrings here. These have some wear to them. These are a little odd. They have like a kind of soft, fuzzy material in the center. And then there's, I noticed when I picked them up, they have this kind of black coloration. I'm not sure if they're meant to look that way or if there's something stuck on them, but these are marked. These are Carnegie marked, so these are Hattie Carnegie. And they're very unique. I'll have to try to Google image them, see if others look this way too. Maybe this black coloration is just a weird enameling style. I'll have to check on that. But once again, anything marked, hard to leave it behind. <laughs> then I picked up this little set here. Now this is, I believe, just clear quartz. The earring is stuck on itself here. Just give me one moment. There we go. These are some caged clear quartz dangle earrings. And then it also came with this piece. Now, this is odd because it doesn't really have a clasp at either end, but it has this hook here. It's a little too big to be a bracelet, but it's too short to be a necklace. So I have a feeling this was a necklace that broke so what I'm going to do is just kind of resize it to a to a reasonable size for a bracelet, put a new clasp on it, and then I can sell this with the earrings as a nice little bracelet and earring set. 
Next we have these little earrings here. I believe that these were sterling silver, these little hoops. Let me take a peek. Yes, they are. These are marked 925RJ. I'll have to look into what the RJ stands for. But these are very nice. They could use a little cleaning, but very pretty. Then I picked up this set. This was an exciting find. When I put this into the box when I was at the yard sale, I thought it looked pretty, but I didn't really look at it too closely. Like I said, I was really trying to shuffle through the jewelry and get all the good stuff that I could. When I got home, however, and I dumped the bag out, I decided to just look kind of a little closer at a couple pieces. And this was one of the things I looked a little closer at. This is an absolutely amazing new with tags Vendome set. And I mean, look at this. Look at these tags, firstly. Isn't this tag amazing? With this hot pink fleur-de-lis Vendome. And then it has its original little tan paper Vendome couture jewelry. And look at this beautiful pink beaded clip-on earrings, silver tone. These are signed on the back Vendome. And then same thing with the necklace, both tags still attached. Now the necklace itself, I don't believe is signed. I'm gonna take a quick look at the clasp, it's not. So honestly, if I had found just this necklace at a yard sale without the paper tags, I don't know that I ever would have known that this was a Vendome piece, I mean, it just, honestly, it's it's a little strange. I This is the first time I've ever seen this like invisible style fishing wire used on a piece that would have been from, let's say, the 50s. So that right off the bat, I mean, I would have known it was old. This clasp definitely leads me to believe in the way it's beaded, but I don't know that I would have known it was Vendome. And so to have these pieces with their original tags is just so cool. And this is a very, very cool set, these beautiful pink colors. You guys know I like my pinks. So this is just, this was an amazing find. I feel like sometimes you come across things and you feel like it's a once in a lifetime find. That's how I feel about this, being that they're still new with their original tags. I mean, the chances of me finding that again, especially the same set would be, oh my gosh, you know, less than one in a million. <laughs> then I picked up this little memory bracelet. This is very pretty. This is a uh, real amber, amber chips. And let's see, I'm going to look a little closer to see if I see any markings. There are some little possibly sterling or silver tone beads in between the amber chips, but I thought that was really pretty. I love natural amber. Another thing, a lot of lot of pieces uh, don't always sell for a ton, but I, I like to pick it up and sell it anyway. It's just so pretty. Then I picked up this little clip-on pair here. These are marked as well. These are Sarah Coventry. There are a whole bunch of pieces to this set. I've had, I believe, a necklace that matched this kind of diamond design. Then I picked up this little necklace here. This one's nothing too crazy. It's just a Lucky Brand necklace, but I don't mind selling Lucky Brand. Doesn't always command a high price, but it usually sells fairly quickly. And I thought this piece was really pretty. This really nice kind of medallion shaped with the flower on top. Really good condition. I thought this was just a really nice one. So for the price I paid, it was definitely worth it. Very cool. Next, we've got these little dangle flower earrings. I thought these were so cool. These are unmarked, I'm pretty sure. Yes, they are unmarked, but they are brass and they have these kind of like cha-cha 
plastic flowers, white and salmon colored, and I just thought these were too cool. Reminds me, I would say, maybe very 60s, 70s style. Very cool. Then I picked up these very pretty rhinestone earrings here. These are very 80s, if you were to ask me. Very pretty. And these are marked as well. These are marked GJD, made in Mexico. I'm not sure what that brand or designer is. I will have to look into it, but very pretty nonetheless. Then I grabbed these earrings here. These are sterling silver, definitely artisan made. Each one is actually a little different, which is kind of interesting. And I do believe these are signed. They are marked on one of the earrings. They, I'm not really sure I can read it. It looks like maybe an E and 96. If anyone knows what this maker's mark or artisan mark could be, please do let me know. But they are very cool. They have these very interesting gray stones up top and they're a mixed metal kind of look, very pretty. Then I grabbed these two sterling silver chains. I'll always pick up sterling chains if they're not too expensive, especially when they're a little bit weightier like these two are. This is a pretty short one here. And then we have a bit of a longer one here and these are both marked sterling. And I believe Italy. Yep. Italy on that side there. And 925 on the other. They definitely need a cleaning. They are quite tarnished, but easy pickup. Then I grabbed this little necklace. I thought this was very cool. It's got some beautiful purple crystals. I really love how these little crystals kind of dangle into the center of this pendant. And this one is marked 14 karat gold filled on the clasp. I'm not sure of the maker on this. I don't see any other markings that I'm aware of. This might be an artisan made piece that is just, you know, a homemade unmarked piece, but very pretty. Then we got this little very dainty necklace here with little pieces of turquoise. And this one was marked, oops, Satya 925. I do believe I've seen that before. Maybe even sold a piece by that brand. Very dainty. Then I grabbed this little sterling charm bracelet. I don't have a whole lot of luck with sterling charm bracelets, but I still, you know, can't leave them behind anyway. There's a couple of sterling charms on here. We have a little angel and a little heart with a music note. Sometimes I'll just make lots. I'll put all the charm bracelets and a bunch of charms together and just sell them as a lot. And then I picked up these two necklaces. So this was kind of funny as well. I picked up one of these. I tossed it in, into my box as I was looking and I thought it looked nice. Then I came across a second one and said, hmm, it still looks nice to me, but it's odd that there are two. Maybe it's not really very good quality because it just seems odd for there to be a nice quality piece and there are two of them identical. But I grabbed them both anyway because everything was so cheap and I thought they just looked so nice and they really are nice. Um, these are sterling silver with real gemstones. And these open in the strangest way. So you can see they have pearls here. These are freshwater pearls. 
and there's no clasp that you can see initially, but the pendant part is actually the clasp. If you turn and pull, whoops, you can open it that way, and this piece comes off, the piece with the gems on it. It's the weirdest thing. I've never, and you can see in here, there's like a little bar, which is what goes into this, and then you turn it down to lock it. I've never seen anything like this before. It, I think, for, let's see, were they marked 925? I believe they may have been marked 925. I'm checking real quick for a maker's mark. Yes, they are marked 925 right here. But there's no maker's mark on these, which I thought was kind of shocking because they're so cool and unique. They seem like they would be something and they probably are and they're just unmarked. I just wish that they were marked. Um, trying to check too to see if both of them even have the 925 mark because oddly enough, this other necklace is not marked 925, even though the other one was. And also, now that I'm looking at them a little closer, it does look like they have different color gemstones, I believe. This one has more greens and blues. And, yep, greens and blues only on that one, where this one has purple, red, green, yellow. So this one has more of those kind of birthstone colors where this one is just more blues and greens. So I don't know if you guys know anything about these, if you possibly know a designer, where they came from, their style, anything, please let me know in the comments because I'm very unfamiliar with these, but they are very cool and they're very quality. So I would love to find out more about them. But yeah, overall, I'd say this was a pretty awesome haul. I, I'm still kind of in shock about all of this. I didn't really realize it when I was grabbing it, but all of this super cool kind of autumn colored stuff that I ended up finding that day is just too funny. I mean, look how pretty it all is together. You really can't go wrong. I love this time of year, personally. I love spring. Summer's okay. Winter's not my favorite, but autumn and fall, for me, that's where it's at, so... <laughs> jewelry to be kind of themed that way. Hey, look at this. You can't go wrong. It's too pretty. But yeah, I think I got a lot of really great pieces. I was really happy with the prices that I was being given that day. So, it, you know, you really can't go wrong. And it was just a lot of fun. I, I really love nothing more than sorting through jewelry and finding some really cool stuff. I, I've said it once. I'll, I've, you know, I'll say it again. No matter how much you sort through jewelry, no matter what you buy and purchase, you're always going to find something you've never seen before. And it just keeps it fun because there's always more to research. There's always more that you can learn. You know, you might think you know everything, but whew, there is more out there to learn. I promise you, because no matter, no matter what, you know, there's always something you don't know, especially with jewelry. My goodness. So as always, guys, I really appreciate you watching. You guys are awesome. Keep commenting, keep liking and subscribing. I love making these videos for you and I have such a fun time interacting with you guys and showing you all of my great treasures. So I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.